Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. What's a slash chord? I get this question all the time. In your mind's eye, you're probably seeing a couple of letters with a slash, right? And um, yeah, it's actually pretty easy to just tell you what to do when you see that. I've done videos like that already. But today what I want to talk about is, is what does it mean for us to imagine chords as slash chords? And maybe there's a better way to think about it, or maybe everything's a slash chord, or, or maybe, maybe nothing is a slash chord. Well, first of all, if this is the second or third video of mine you've seen, and you're getting some value out of these, and you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. We're building a community of folks who are interested in really bolstering their music theory knowledge um, in order to support their own musical interests. I'm really hoping this is music theory for everyone. I don't want to go into too much notation detail or get into, you know, big discussions about like whether or not you should use a hemi demi semi quaver there, but there are some good basic things to know. And one of them is the notational convention called a slash chord. And a slash chord is, you know, at the simplest level, some chord over some bass note. A C chord with a G in the bass. Well, you can see that my notation program has correctly identified that as C slash G. Can we do a quick review? Let's do a quick review. Every triad or seventh chord or really any very complicated chord may have as many as, you know, seven different tones in it. In the case of a C triad like this one, any one of those notes could be the bottom note. In other words, this note G on top could be the bottom note. And my little program here says that's a C chord with G in the bass, C slash G. And by the same token, the E, the major third of the chord, could be the bottom note. That's C with E in the bass. When you just see the letter C like that, it's what we call a root position triad. All chords appear in root position and then in various inversions. Here's an example of a C7 chord. It's got four different notes in it. And this program says it's C7, but it also says, well, look, you got four notes there. It may be C diminished with E in the bass. Every slash chord is going to be somewhat ambiguous, and that's where things start to get very interesting because ambiguity is where we live in art, right? It's that sort of fine line that like things start to get interesting in. Let's look at the example of several different songs, how they use slash chords, and maybe how we can begin to understand it. So what brought the question up from several people was the observation that a piece that I talked about last week, Night Walk with Mist, or as I'm just calling it, Night Mist, is notated here on this chart as a series of chords with specific bass notes. C minor, C minor slash B, C minor slash B flat, F7 over A, B half diminished, sorry, D half diminished over A flat and G. And if you look closely at this, this is actually kind of the first example of why slash chords can be useful for us as notation. Because the base for C minor is C. And then look at the bottom note as it descends. B goes down to B flat and then A. Things get really interesting. A flat down to G. In other words, I've created a chromatically descending bass line. Some people would call it a line cliche. It's just a really important component of the piece. As a composer and arranger, I want you to do it my way. I was uh, in a composer's group in Boston in the, I guess it must have been early 90s. Uh, one of the composers in the group, Tom Obo Lee, was a terrific flute player. And so I played like jazz with him. And I had I said to him one time, Tom, you, you, you're a great improviser. You're a great player. And yet you write everything out in notation and hand out these parts. And a lot of the time his music felt really very fluid and dynamic, almost like solo music, but everything was written out. He, he, I said, Tom, why, why are you doing this? And he said, Chris, because I want total control. 
and a light bulb went off. I had, you know, I was like, this was this point I was sort of like in my 30s, right? And I never really thought to myself, you know what? Total control. And composers and arrangers, when they're making their chord progressions, may well want total control. Take a look at this Kate Bush song, Babushka, which, you know, has this kind of beautiful moment in it. We can see here the opening goes A flat minor, D flat over F, to E flat over G. There's a very specific requirement. A flat minor, D flat over F, and then the E flat over G. Kate really wants us to do that, right? This is what is required. It's part of the song. Now, there's tons of examples of this. Take a look at, uh, you know, A Day in the Life from a John and Paul, and you can see a very clear example of something that they did an awful lot. We begin on the G chord, and then as we walk down heading to E minor, the walk down takes us to the E minor chord, and the bass continues down the G scale. Now it's E minor over D. That walk down is best notated by slash chords. Is that a G chord? Yes. Is that a B minor chord? Yes. It's the second inversion. E minor, E minor 7 over its seventh. It's just the third inversion. And yet, without this walking bass line, we're going to experience things very, very differently. And it's not going to feel like the song that we love, right? Another example of that is in Billy Joel's Piano Man. C, G over B, F over A. This is a lot like the Beatles thing that we just looked at. F is a root position, C over its third, D7 to G. Without this walking bass line, it just wouldn't feel the same. These are slash chords, but they're more just chords, right? They're chords that the composer wants you to handle a certain way. You know, there's plenty of other examples in jazz as well. And sometimes you don't actually get the slash chord notated. Here's the first few bars of Rodgers and Hart's My Funny Valentine, a jazz standard. C minor, C minor major 7, C minor 7, C minor 6, A flat. Looking at that, there are no slash chords, and yet the suggestion is clearly that this line... C down to B, down to B flat, down to A, down to A flat is a really important part of the world. And frequently, pianists will play that at the bottom of their voicing. There's the B, right? There's the A. And so you get that sense of a slash chord. The bass player may or may not pedal a C. Now, the only time I really think that a slash chord is really a slash chord, like I'm going in there with... <laughs> a machete and cutting things up, because kind of that's what it applies, right? It feels kind of violent, right? Is when you're really mangling the sonority of a chord. I saw Pat Metheny play recently solo. I'd never seen him play solo. So he's playing his baritone guitars and his acoustic guitar and his Picasso guitar with, you know, dozens of strings. And his grip is so interesting on the guitar because he has just fairly big hands, his thumbs over the top, whoomp. So he grabbed like what seemed to me like a fairly normal shape, and I'm hearing like the chord that I'm familiar with, his thumbs over the top, and he takes his thumb and he goes, I'm not going to stay on this note. I'm going to go up a half step. Now that's a slash chord. My C triad with C in the bass is really different when I play C triad with C sharp in the bass. D flat diminished major seven. That's a strong sonority, strongly dissonant not functional in the way that we ordinarily describe functional harmony. You can do a little test for yourself, and it's probably not a bad idea sometime if you have a keyboard handy or something like that, and say, well, what if I take a C triad and try it with a C in the bass, try it with a D flat or C sharp in the bass? This is a favorite. We'll talk about this one in a moment. All of these chords can be described in terms of functional harmony, extensions, dissonances, major and minor thirds, flat thirteenths, things like that. But if you want somebody to play this, 
you're much better off doing what this program has done and saying that's a C chord with E flat in the bass. The E and the E flat are fighting, but it's just so much easier just to write C over E flat. Now that's where slash chords are useful. And one last look at a notational convention, an example, would be perhaps to look at uh, Joni Mitchell's Coyote here. And, and this is, I think, just a beautiful example of like the sound of something that is rich and thick and, and just comes out of the actual sonority of the chord that the composer is looking for. So we've got this beautiful moment where C major seven kind of looks like a G chord. You know, get this out of the way so we can see it. This, C, this big C major seven kind of looks like a G chord over C. A G chord over C. We know this tune, right? And it, the triad itself, it's kind of easy to play. It's sort of fun. Now, I, I don't know that um, Ms. Mitchell was thinking C major 9. I don't, I doubt it, right? I think she's thinking pedal tone, triad, right? Pedal tone, triad, pedal tone triad. The bass note is persisting. It's a slash note underneath these triads. And uh, and then in this line here, we've got another sort of beautiful example of like of the utility of a slash chord. This um, E flat add nine sound, just kind of an E flat major sound, follows this uh, sort of beautiful um, F, you know, G over the melody is an E, so... F major 7 over G. Now that chord right there, remember I said we'd come back to that? I think that's the one that, that I think is the sort of the slash chord that got me into slash chords because it's a, it's a compound sound. The G feels kind of like G7 going to C. I play a big old G and play F major 7 over the top of it, I get what this, I think, really correctly analyzes as G13 sus. This is kind of like the another beautiful way of analyzing um, a G sus chord. Analyze it as F slash G. It'll, it's kind of a Disney sound as well. Slash chord. So it's, what's a slash chord? It's really the way a composer and arranger gets you to do what they want. Slash chords are a utility concept in notation. They are not a type of sound, right? There's all kinds of slash chords. And at some level, every time you play a chord, it's a slash chord. There is a bass note. It might be a member of the chord. It might be an extension. I don't know. Um, so either they're all slash chords or there are no slash chords. <laughs> I don't know. Has this been helpful? I seriously doubt it. But I hope it'll help you think about your voicings because great chords and great chord progressions rely on great bass lines. And that's what slash chords are really useful for us for. Well, like and subscribe and ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.